Meet Eric and Mary, who are pushing the limits of innovation, printing arms with a 3D printer from their sailboat in the heart of the Guatemalan jungle. My name is Will and this is Olia. We are professional filmmakers who jumped on a sailboat and are exploring the globe in search of inspiring stories and people along the way. We hope you enjoy this series and if so, tap the subscribe button so you can follow our adventure. If you watched our last couple of episodes, you'll know that Bonita has undergone a significant cosmetic renovation, improving both her interior comfort and exterior aesthetics. However, in order to ensure she is performing at her best, there are certain areas of the boat that still require attention, with the rigging being the main concern. During our recent voyage from Jamaica to Guatemala, we observed a significant amount of flexing in the upper and lower shrouds, causing us a lot of nervousness in high winds. To address the situation, we've put in an order for replacement parts from the States. After months of waiting on the hardware and material to arrive, we headed to Texas Bay to meet up with Tom, a highly respected rigger in the area. He's built a dedicated rigging loft with all of the essentials to pull the mast and rigging easily from the dock. His years of experience make it all look so easy, but we're extremely happy that he was available to help us. As each project is completed, Bonita feels stronger and more capable, and we're eager to set out and feel the wind in our sails once again. However, before we do, we have one more story to share, which involves a refit of a different matter. It's remarkable to think about the advancements in technology over the past few years, particularly with 3D printers. These machines have revolutionized numerous industries. For example, nowadays you can print a house and even a school. They are now printing meat that contains muscle, fat, and blood vessels. Even wilder still, bioprinting has made it possible to create body parts, including kidneys and even hearts for transplants. It all seems pretty futuristic, yet somehow, 3D printing has even found its way to the jungles of Guatemala. We're on our way to meet Eric, a sailor who is 3D printing prosthetic arms inside of his boat. Yes, you heard me right. He is changing lives right from his sailboat. Perfect. Penny, she's friendly. G'day. Awesome. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. Yeah. She's actually my service dog. Right. Yeah, we met we yeah. met at Tortugal. So it's the boat's a mess and my wife is going, oh the boat's a mess. <laughs> Coming on board? You want? Eric and his wife Mary have been sailing and living aboard for 35 years. It never occurred to them that they would end up in Guatemala. So tell us, how did this all unfold? How did you get to being on a floating 3D printer shop? <laughs> oh my. Um, so when we landed here, we saw that there was a huge need for amputees here. And I knew that it was being done with 3D printers and I started to educate myself and found out it didn't really look that hard and so we got a little support from some friends and we bought our first Prusa printer and um, made our first model for a young man and saw the massive change in his life from this very shy kid to this very bold, confident kid. He was hunting food to help feed his family. And so then we decided, okay, let's see how much further this will go. We thought we would do one or two arms a month. And in the last year, we've done about 60.
designed by Team Unlimited, and it is a mechanically driven. It's uh, It works by bending your elbow, so when you bend your elbow, the fingers close, okay? And this is all very adjustable, and so we can adjust how they close, how fast they close. Do they close this way? Do they close this way? Do they close this way? Can all be adjusted here. Um, one of the nice things about this, particularly in this setting, is I can replace anything that gets broken very easily. It's amazingly simple, yet it can change a person's life. So uh, this is just incredible. I love it. According to the United Nations, there are one and a half million people worldwide who need a prosthetic, but less than 10% of them will ever receive one in their lifetime due to the high cost. Here in Guatemala, prosthetics are so expensive that even if an entire village comes together to save their money, it would still be impossible for someone in need to afford one. Through the nonprofit, Eric and his team are able to provide these arms for free. Needless to say, their work is incredibly important and carries a huge impact. So I've had a lot of people up in the first world that are like, why are you doing these manual prosthetics? We have all this great robotic stuff you can do. It takes batteries. And these people, A, can't afford the batteries, and B, some of them are so remote, there is nowhere to buy batteries. I was trying to explain to one, of, he was a designer who was trying to work with us. He goes, what do you mean? You can go to any store and buy batteries. I said, one of the guys I did a hand for is so far out that to contact him, I sent a text message to the last village that has text reception, and they have one cell phone in the whole village. But he's two villages away, further up in the mountains. So they pass the word on to the next person heading up the trail to the next village, and then they pass the word on, and it gets to him. And then his response can take another two or three days coming back down. His closest battery store would be two days travel for him easily to get to and then he can't afford them so we keep it simple 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 during our time as eric and his team we met many of the people he had helped each person had their own unique stories and ideas of how they would use their prosthetic arms The stories were beautiful, but there was one girl in particular that melted our hearts. Oh, Cindy. Like most young ladies, she likes the movie Frozen. And I said, you know, by the way, I'll make your hand in Frozen if you want. Frozen? <laughs> so yes, yes, you can have Frozen. <laughs> one of her sisters and her, because she only has one hand, would make the heart each doing, you know, she'd do her one, she'd do the other. And we got the hand on her, and one of the first thing, very first things she did with the hand was she made her own heart. And of course, at that point, the whole family gets emotional, and we get emotional. And, you know, maybe to some people it's not a big deal, but to them it was huge. And she sent us a picture. She's actually holding a book and turning a page. She's in school. That's a big deal. Her mom works a lot of hours to make sure she's in school. She cares about her. And that she can now do things like other kids do. Yeah, that's a pretty good feeling to know that you can restore some of that. We've discovered this new life. You never know what life will bring you. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to return home to New Zealand. As a result, we made a decision to buy a sailboat in Alaska, not knowing what lay ahead. With this series, however, we feel like we're on the right path for us. Likewise, Eric and Mary came to Guatemala during the pandemic just for the hurricane season, but suddenly felt the calling and fully embraced it, not knowing what the future would hold for them. We're staying, and we're trying to train other people to do this, and this is not going away, and you can depend on us being here, especially for the kids. I mean, I can't start a kid on a prosthetic, 
he outgrows it next year and I'm gone. I've changed his life for a year and now he's back to where he was. That's just not acceptable to me. It's just not acceptable. It's a long-term commitment and not everyone can pull it off, but the happiness that comes from it is indescribable. We have done a lot of humanitarian work, but this is just so cool because to think that, you know, here I'm retired, I have diabetes, I have hearing issues, and yet we're making this huge impact on people. And oh, it's, just, it's, all, it's really hard to describe in some ways. It's a great feeling that you can hand somebody their life back. We had an amazing time here in Rio, but for now, our calling is to keep sailing wherever the wind takes us and discover new countries and new stories. Thank you, Eric, for the inspiring work you do.